Dating apps like Tinder have risen in popularity in the last few years. As modern life becomes busier, it becomes easier than ever to connect with people via the internet to find out if they're right for us. Just as Tinder can create happy endings for couples, it can also create horror stories. Number 5 22-year-old Phil Stevenson from Darlington, England was swiping through his Tinder account in July of 2016. After swiping left and right through various profiles, he finally made a match with 22-year-old Nicole Graham from South Shields. The pair chatted for a while and soon Nicole made him a strange proposition. She was due to fly out to Turkey the next day with family. However, one family member had dropped out because their passport hadn't arrived in time. She then said that if he wanted to, he was free to join the holiday and they could treat this as their first date. This was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and the 22-year-old didn't let the holiday pass him by. He packed his bags and arrived at the airport the next morning, meeting Nicole for the first time. However, he recalls to the independent newspaper that their first meeting outside of the airport didn't go smoothly. He says, quote, As soon as we got on the plane, she wanted to hold hands. She was a nice girl, don't get me wrong. For me, it was just a bit of banter, like two mates going away together. Little did Phil know that he was landing in Marmaris just as the attempted military coup against the Turkish government was happening. Earlier that day, shots had been fired at a nearby hotel and a helicopter had been brought down. Luckily, Phil and Nicole were able to get out of the country unscathed thanks to the British embassy. Looking back on the event, Phil laughs and recalls that he was more scared of his date than he was the situation they'd found themselves in. What's more is that Nicole left him with an $80 bar tab and stole his toothpaste. Phil hasn't let the experience put him off of dating apps, but he's promised to be less spontaneous with where he has his first dates. Number 4 Tinder is known mostly for hookups and casual encounters. However, there are a few instances where people meet via Tinder and can make a relationship work. So when Melanie received a marriage proposal from Brian, she passed it off as a jokey pickup line. However, when Brian opened with, so does that mean we're married now? He was much more serious about the proposal than Melanie imagined. Melanie decided to go along with it and at first it seemed to be all in good fun. The pair talked about their hypothetical wedding and planned out the details. The joke between the two ran its course over the next few weeks and soon Melanie had put Brian in the back of her mind. She'd recently started dating someone new and decided to delete Tinder as it had served its purpose. However, Brian didn't feel quite the same way. The pair had only ever chatted via Tinder but Brian took it upon himself to find Melanie on Instagram after she deleted her Tinder profile. He bombarded her with messages every day professing his love for her and telling her how he wanted to fly her to Cancun, Mexico for their wedding. Melanie quickly blocked Brian, which worked for a while. It seemed that Brian didn't get the message and took the rejection as Melanie was playing hard to get, only making him fight harder and harder. Two months after the pair had exchanged messages, Melanie started getting odd calls in the middle of the night. At first, she thought these were spam calls and that they would go away sooner or later. However, night after night, the calls persisted until one evening her new boyfriend answered the phone. On the other end was Brian, saying how he needed to see Melanie face to face to propose to her. When her new boyfriend told him to back off, he creepily said, You might be her boyfriend now, but you won't be for long. I know her address. Reading out all of Melanie's personal information. Melanie threatened Brian by telling him she planned to go to the police and this finally made him back off. However, she discovered that she had no record of any of their interactions as she had deleted Tinder. Thankfully, Melanie reports that she hasn't heard from Brian since. Number 3 If there's one lesson to take away from this video, it's to take extra precaution when you're meeting someone for the first time. Always let someone know where you're going and meet in a public place and always watch your drink if you have one. The next story comes from a Reddit user and he responded to an Ask Reddit question of what's your Tinder horror story. He prefaces the comment by saying that his story isn't from his own personal experience but a story from his bartending dates. 
To protect the identity of those involved, no names, ages, or locations are mentioned. So for the purpose of this story, we'll refer to the people in the story as Woman A and Man A. Woman A was a regular at the bar where the commenter worked, and over a few drinks, she began to tell him about an awful Tinder date she'd recently been on. The commenter expected a story about how her date was rude or generally creepy, but he got a lot more than he bargained for and so did the woman. She explained that she went on a date with Man A after matching on Tinder. The evening went pretty well and she invited him back to her place for the evening. She woke up the next morning, said goodbye to her date and went about her business as normal, thinking it had been a one night stand and nothing more. Only a few days later, her card was declined. Woman A checked her bank account only to find out that the one night stand had racked up multiple charges on both her debit and credit card while she was asleep. He purchased items from Best Buy, Grubhub, and even set himself up on Netflix and Hulu with her card details while she slept in the bed beside him. When she went back onto Tinder to confront him, she found that he deleted his profile and subsequently had to file a police report for identity theft. Number 2 A 20-year-old woman from Wales whose name has been withheld to protect her identity opened up to the Daily Post about being drugged by her date that she met through Tinder. The 20-year-old woman explained how she matched with a 26-year-old man in September of 2019. The pair chatted for a few days before finally deciding to organize a date. The pair planned to meet up in person and go to dinner have a few drinks, and see where the evening took them. When the date arrived, the woman was surprised as her date had claimed on his profile that he was 26. However, after meeting in person, she realized he looked much, much older. She told the Daily Post, I really wanted to give him a chance and honestly it felt too awkward to leave when we'd only just met. She describes how the date felt awkward from the beginning but didn't feel threatened in any way by his behavior. She commented, quote, All through dinner, he sat very close to me. I just slowly tried to edge down the booth and put some distance between us. We didn't really talk much, which was weird. It was an awkward day, but my gut didn't tell me I was in any danger. As the pair had met for the first time during the week, they decided to stick to soft drinks. However, at some point during the night, the unnamed woman began to feel strange. She began to feel dizzy and not in control of her body. Sensing that something was wrong, she decided to end the date early. She noticed that her date's behavior had changed. He was extremely insistent on walking her home and taking her inside to ensure she was safe. In a further comment, she said, quote, When I got to my door, I tried to say goodnight and turn away, but he grabbed my wrist and told me to stay and talk longer. I told him I didn't feel well, but he still didn't let go. I started to panic and I told him to let go of me and tried pulling my wrist from him. Eventually, he let go and tried to make a joke about me overreacting. I turned and got inside as fast as I could, but I didn't make it far. When she woke up the next morning, she realized she'd been spiked and how close she'd come to being in a dangerous position with a stranger in her home. Many victims, such as the unnamed woman, don't come forward about their ordeal as there's still a stigma attached to it and they feel ashamed and embarrassed about what happened. Number 1 28-year-old Peter Bozier of Sudbury, Massachusetts was arrested in October of 2020 after kidnapping and assaulting a young woman he'd met on Tinder. The woman's name and age have been withheld as the case against Bozier is still standing. Peter and the unnamed woman matched with each other on October 13, 2020. For a few days, the pair exchanged messages and all seemed well. In fact, it was going well enough that the pair finally decided to meet up for their first date. Little did the woman know she was about to experience the most terrifying Tinder date of her life. Over the course of October 19th and into the 20th, she was held against her will by Bozier. She was held by Peter at his home where he threatened her and her young son before his behavior turned physical and violent. He began hitting and beating the woman, with the beatings becoming more severe by the hour. Luckily, she was able to escape and rushed herself to a hospital located in Burlington. It was here that medical staff alerted the police. Full details on how exactly she escaped haven't been released, but police have said that the woman made a lucky escape and the case could have ended in tragedy. Peter was arrested on Tuesday, October 20th while driving home around the Sudbury area. During his detainment, he became violent and uncooperative, 
fighting off several police officers that resulted in a few broken ribs and scrapes. He was subsequently transferred to a different hospital to be treated for his injuries before he was taken into custody. He was subsequently charged with kidnapping, strangulation, assault and battery, and many other crimes. Bozier is due to appear in court sometime in 2021. The woman has reported that she's recovering and doing well and is working with a therapist to overcome the ordeal. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But I've been Ty Knotts and I'll catch you guys in the next video.